<laughs> I've actually, this is my first time ever splitting a car in half. Have you ever seen a 30 year old fuel cell, fuel bladder? No. They're disgusting and horrific. <laughs> they are from the bowels of the nether world of the industrial revolution. <laughs> What's up, people? Today, we're gonna get back to the Tame Prototipo race car, which is actually very exciting because this thing was made in Mexico. I am not kidding you. The Top Gear guys are idiots because yes, Mexico can produce an amazing race car. This thing has a carbon fiber monocoque, carbon fiber bodywork, full aero, is an, is an awesome prototype. But maybe more exciting and more importantly than that, we have the first Genius Garage student of 2020 who has moved here from Reno, Nevada. And let's check him out. This is his project. Who How's are you? Cameron. What's up? Why are you here at Genius Garage? What, what do you want to do with your future? Well, I want to be a motorsports mechanic. I aim to make a career, hopefully a long-lasting career in motorsports and racing field. It's, you know, quite the experience and quite the dream I've had for a while, so. For sure, and you had one year at UTI, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm excited to have you here, and I think this is a perfect project for you because this is a real race car. Exactly, that's, you know, when I first heard about the program, that's exactly kinda uh, what I saw. You know, I heard about the program before the Lycan build was announced, and when I saw the whole thing of students working on race cars and going to racing events and racing them. I was like, that's exactly the experience I need to uh, you know, further get your career going. along, get my career started, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so let's talk about this car. What are you doing right now? Uh, right now, we're getting everything disconnected, getting ready to essentially split the car in half. Okay, why is that? Why are we doing that? But we have to get to the fuel cell and take that out in the fuel bladder and take all that out to get a new one made uh, for the car, because this one's probably been sitting a good while, and we need to oh, yeah. make sure everything's up to date. So, currently getting everything disconnected. I have the wiring harness all disconnected. Okay, all I see you've lines. labeled everything here. Yes, got okay. all of our, it's kind of a mess, but that's why we got all our labels. So you're uh, preparing this so it's down to the things to split it in half then, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so we're looking at this car, and there's a lot of new viewers. There's no body work on it. I'm gonna overlay some pictures so they can see, but you've obviously had to strip this down. Cameron, can you show us what has to be disconnected and, and why it has to be split in half, like where does the fuel cell come out of, and uh, what, what you're gonna do here next. Well, yeah, so right now, I'm just disconnecting the last of our throttle cables, the last thing really, of the small items. Okay. Other than that, we just have to disconnect, pretty much get rid of this entire sort of trunnion frame attachment that goes back to the transmission, and right. attaches it to the monocoque, and okay. then on the front of the motor, yes. we have, uh, some motor mounts there that okay. attach it to the big billet the one here. Stuff. Looks like yes. there's another one here, yep. I think there's and then two other big billet mounts here. On the bottom, yes. Now, if I'm seeing this correctly, it appears. I want to feel something. Okay. It appears that the dry sump pan on the bottom of the motor is also used to be a partially stressed member, or at least a mount for this front mount from the engine to the carbon fiber monocoque here, and then this top mount uh, bolts to the head of the engine. Yeah. So this engine is in fact stressed or partially stressed, right? Oh yeah. Because that connects to the transaxle. Yeah. And then all of these uh, the upper and lower wishbone suspension and the push rod suspension here, which has the, the shocks, is bolted on. So what you mentioned trunnion or framework. What's going on with that? So all of this, this is uh, like all, kind of all these sort of like A frames. I got three. Yeah, let's look at here. So we've got a, a, a triangular link here that mounts to this big point on yep. the transaxle that is mounting here and here to the monocoque. Yes. What's this other rod? You want to show people that? So this here is just the shift linkage. Okay. So we've got that, that goes from the stick shift back to the transaxle, yep. yeah? All the way to the back. Okay. Yeah, all the way back there. And then it looks like there's another big triangulated link to the top of the roll bar up there. Yes. It's okay. It's just more of the frame goes all the way back to the transaxle. And this up here, you know, they kind of use all these right. sort of mount different So maybe you can- shocks. Yes, indeed. So, Maybe you can show everybody the extent of what the carbon fiber monocoque on this car is. So, as far as, oh yeah, the monocoque. So it goes, pretty much the monocoque itself is just right here where the driver sits and then you have under here where your feet would go. Okay, let's look at that. The suspension. Okay, so the front suspension mounts directly to the carbon monocoque yes. structure here. Okay. Yep, 
percentage amounts to the transaxle. I see. And the driver's feet, in fact, would end up up in this frontal area. Exactly. And then these are the master cylinders for the, yep. the brake and the clutch. Yes. Okay. And then um, it appears that it has polycarbonate or plastic windows. Um, yes. And then a uh, carbon roof, but the carbon roof is more aerodynamics. It's not really a structural part of the monocoque so much, yeah? Yeah. Okay, and then I so, see that it has a steel roll cage yep. that's welded together and then bolts to hard points on the monocoque here. Yes, right there. Okay, yeah, there's a point. In, okay, so. well that's pretty common. This is a very nice looking monocoque, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Nice to work on. So now one thing that I thought was really interesting about this car, that it was built in Mexico for a South American racing series. South America has a lot of famous racing drivers in the past and sponsors and some cars. But I think the Western wor or the whole world doesn't really ever think of Mexico as being a place to make race cars, do they? No, oh, yeah, no. I mean, I didn't even really think about it until I was working on this. And right. I, I mean, you told me everything about it. Well, I, I, I think it's a super high quality car and I'm excited to do it. What, what do you think about it just in general? Um, I'm really excited about it, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean you've got a, a you big got nasty <laughs> Raynard, which is made in England. Oh yeah. But I mean, kind of working on this, this is the project, and this is, uh, I mean, I see lots of great potential with this, so. For sure. Um, yeah, I'm excited to get this going, and hopefully in the next few months here we get this thing up and running, and. For sure. Oh yeah, take it. Take well, okay, so, it. and, um, so how about we just go ahead and get this split apart today? Yeah. You think we can do that? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, good guys, I'm gonna set this camera down for a minute so we can group, figure this out. We've gotta support the monocoque, right, with probably some yep. jacks or some blocks and then get in the right position because when we split it in half, there's not gonna be anything supporting the back of the monocoque or the engine. And it's not reasonable to just unbolt it and then take it apart with two guys. Um, naturally, the front is supported by the tires and wheels, as you can see up here, and the rear is supported by those tires and wheels, but there's going to be some compliance there. So depending on how we do it, we need to, we need to figure that out. So next step, and then we'll come back and yeah, should do it. Yeah, should be <laughs> okay, we'll come back and, and do it on camera for you guys so you can watch our uh, misery or triumph, right? Yes. It'll okay, here we go. My wife is here and she's got the camera, yes! Which means you guys can actually see us take it apart or break it, I don't know, but I'm not in charge. Cameron is, it's his project, which means I'm the lackey. What do you want me to do? All right, so at the moment, we're about to just split everything off. I got the top two nuts on. Okay, let's look at that. What do you, here, come on in. So, but first, we talked about those that big framework. Yes. You've removed all that. Yes, all that framework is removed. Here's it's, the top one. It's all under Here's the, the side pieces. Yep. So right now, if I'm not mistaken, the only thing holding this all together are these four mounting points, these billet ones for the engine, right? Yes. On either side. Yep. The only thing's holding that to the monocoque. Okay, and I see you've removed two nuts. Why'd you do that? Well, we removed the top two because those ones aren't, any, aren't under any compression or anything. Everything well, no, you, so with the weight sitting on it, those yeah. are in compression. Yeah, so, yeah. Other and so you got the two on the bottom holding it. Yeah, the only thing holding it on the right now are the two on the bottom. So the only thing holding this car together right now from splitting in half are the two nuts down here on either side. Yes. Right? Exactly. Okay, so it would seem to me we need to gently take a little pressure. You've got, do you have some cardboard or wood underneath this? Yeah, I got wood under both of the jacks right here. Okay, so you, you've taken a little pressure off these, right? Yeah. Okay. okay, they're both, so these are ready to go. They're supporting the monocoque in the front. Mm -hmm. And then I need to put some pressure on this quick jack right here to hold it, right? Yes. All right, I'll be ballast. All right. You wanna go watch him undo that? So I have to use this quick jack to support effectively all the weight of the engine. The transaxle has got the weight on the tires back here. Yeah, so. And then when you get that other nut off, we're gonna have to push on the rear tires and we're just gonna slide the whole rear assembly back and yep. then gently set the motor down. Yep, yep. I'll use my get this washer up. Okay. Unstuck from this. Come on now. Uh, see. All right. So are we gonna call it a day after splitting this in half? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that sounds good. So a hideous fuel cell will be next, right? Yep, that'll be our objective tomorrow. Have you ever seen a 30-year-old fuel cell, fuel bladder? No. They're disgusting and horrific. <laughs> they are from the bowels of the netherworld of the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> it's gonna be So uh, have fun with that. All right, look forward to it. <laughs> Looking forward to everything in this car. Okay, so you got the nut off on the right side, right? Yep. 
You almost both got this one off? Yep, they're both off. Okay, and the shift linkage is still attached, right? Yeah. But the bolts are out. Yeah. Okay, so I will keep holding pressure on this. Do you want to go ahead and start trying to roll it back? Uh, this? yeah. Try and... We might. Hit it, bump it. How come yours isn't moving? Let's see what we got. You can gently take a pry bar and pry between the two aluminum pieces. Yeah. That's is what it, we had to is do. Is it caught on that? Uh, it looks like it probably. No, is it caught on the shift linkage? Oh, no. Okay, that's sliding nice. Okay, so you just need to gently bump that apart. Yep. Okay, now you're prying aluminum against aluminum, so you're not hurting any composite, right? Nope. Okay, you mean yes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Keep going. All right, All right. so you the bottom. All right. Oh, it looks like I need to take more pressure on it. Yeah. Pry, pry, get, get it apart. I don't want to. Yeah. Push on that tire. Is there something else holding this thing together? Oh, almost got it. Okay, hold on. Push on the tire. Shift like it. Push on the tire. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. Okay. All right. Oh. Did we hear something? Uh, just cool coming out. Oh, how much? Uh, not a terrible amount. Okay. Uh, well, well, I'm going to quit being the lackey before you make me clean it up. Ah! <laughs> Very good. That's not true. So, uh, do I have to clean that up now, boss? Uh, I'll, I'll take care of this. Okay. For was that, do you think that was the most sophisticated way for us to take it apart? Um, and, almost. Yeah, and everybody on the internet's going to be really impressed. Oh, yeah. I think everybody just absolutely shocked at how well we managed to do that. That was amazing. It's like we were the ones that engineered this car. We spent money specifically just to do this impressively. Oh, yeah. I can say clearly, I've like, taken this whole thing apart. I mean, it's like, it's exactly the way I would have done it. Ex sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's tell you what. Let's, um, uh, what I can do, let me go find a dolly. We'll set the motor on a dolly so that we can wheel this back while you're getting it, okay? All right, all right. That's gonna be, all right. Um, grab some hand this. Yeah, that probably would've been a good idea if I had that to start with, huh? Uh, yeah, it would've been. But, this is how we learn. Okay. I don't wanna bring this whole thing. Okay, so, this is gonna be, Okay, um, hmm. Hmm. You know what we could have done that would have been smart? Put the engine crane in here. That would have been. If we were able to suspend the motor. Yeah, we didn't do that though. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. The other thing that would be really smart is to put this dolly under the back of the monocoque. You think it's supported on that jack properly over there? Yes. Yes, it's got it. Okay, good. I'm gonna slide the dolly into the monocoque. That should hold it. It's kind of under the bulkhead here. Can you go a little higher, please? Go on a bit. Yes, please. Go, go, higher. More, more, go, 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 go. Yes, yes, yes. Good. More. Hey. There's a. Oh, crap. There's a stupid arrow there. Um, hold on. Let me go get another dolly. You know, you can probably let it, yeah, let it down real quick. Just drop it, should be fine. Good. No, take it out, sorry. Okay, go ahead and drop it. Yeah, take the jack out. All right, let's move these two, let's move these body panels out of the way. Gotta oh, yeah. sure are lighter, okay? Oh yeah. Carbon. Yeah. It's nice. Well, these come off real nicely too, which would be good for when you want to do the body work. Go ahead and take it farther forward. We've got lots of room. I got you. We'll push the car forward. Okay, so we should be able to just push this on the dolly now. Yeah. Nice. Let's just get it out of the way, reasonably. And then we get this. This is making a mess. So here, get this out of the Go ahead and get your wiring. Yeah. Pick up your wiring, pick it that way. There you go. My lovely wiring harness. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> um, now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and I will lift this with the quick jack and uh, go ahead with that one and the two by four. Bring, bring that jack over here and get to put the front of the engine with that. And we're gonna go ahead and push this thing back. I think that'll be good. Oops, sliding. That was just a problem. <laughs> Alright, one, two, three. Oh, I'm, I'm sliding. 
You got it? Yeah. Alright, the car. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Is it centered? Okay. Oh. Excellent. Oh. Okay, now, um, make sure that doesn't. That's gonna need to go underneath a little bit more. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna lift this. You're good. Yes. Sir. Okay, now, don't let it slide out. I'm gonna come back here and pull on it, and we're gonna bring it back further so we have more room. All right. Moving okay? Yep. Oh, you know what? I think it's in gear. Hold on. May have been moving the shift linkage and all that. Yeah. I think that's neutral there. Ready? I could have been wild with struggling to. That's possible. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Okay. Come on over. Do you want to come take a look too? You can go. Okay, so you can get some more oil dry and clean up the mess. Yeah. Uh, neither one of us looked at this yet. What do you see there, Cameron? There. Well, we're missing our alternator pulley. Well, I think the guys took it off. They might have put a new one on already. That looks pretty new. Yeah. It's also really loose. Yeah. Clearly not. I'm not real keen about that. Tension here. So here's the Hall effect sensor. Yep. It's got like, looks like four spots. Obviously it's gonna need a V-belt to drive the water pump. Yep. And the, uh, the electricity pump. <laughs> basically. Yeah, that's what it works Otherwise it looks good. So here is, that is where the fuel cell is. That's our access port right there. Yeah. Okay. The jillion bolts, all right. So we'll clean this stuff up tomorrow. Yep, well I guess start on Yeah, we get clean it up now. And then. And then we'll, uh, we'll get that out tomorrow. Huh? Yep. Okay. Part two. How do you feel about it? I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I've actually, this is my first time ever splitting a car in half. This is the reason why I can't. As far as taking a motor out. It oh, yeah. just goes. <laughs> this is the reason why anybody who works on 1980s Ferraris, especially Testarossas, think that Ferrari designed the street cars idiotically. Because you basically have to split those cars in half and do even worse work just to change the belts. Oh, yeah. It's, I get it's silly. It's silly. It really is. Oh yeah. But this is a for real race car, so exactly. So this is what we got to do. Yeah, exactly. It's all part of it. Everything's stressed. Everything's a part of the chassis. So you still want to be a race car mechanic? Yes. Okay. This is like the coolest thing ever. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we'll see you guys next time. Please share this. This is the Tame Prototipo, uh, early '90s prototype, Nissan powered, made in Mexico, carbon bodywork. Cameron's first real race car build. Oh yeah. And so, uh, are, are this going to be running and pretty and on the track this year? Oh yeah. Oh, nice. nice. So share it. Stay tuned. Uh, come back, comment, share your support with Cameron, and naturally subscribe and hit that bell so YouTube will actually show you guys stuff. There are many tools, tricks, and products that help me do all these automotive adventures. And one of them is ceramic coating by Avalon King. This stuff literally bonds to the molecular level of your paint to keep that long lasting shine for years and better than any old conventional wax literally can. Nobody actually has time for wax on, wax off anymore. So give Avalon King a try. You can go down in the description, buy some, you're gonna be glad you did.